Brad, product specialist here at Kinsey, and today we're going to walk through changing crops on a True Speed equipped planter. We're going to walk through a 4000 series equipped unit that, of course, is pull rows only, and talk about a little bit of the differences when you look at our True Speed equipped planters 3665, 3505, with True Speed and, of course, the split row option, and what's all entailed in changing crops for both of those units. First thing we're going to look at, of course, is our we have a pull row unit here. On a 3665 or a 3505, you of course have a push row unit. And on those push rows where that bulk fill hose connects to the swivel on the front, we of course have the storage caps that come with the push rows. Function of these is to really just block the seed and air coming to the push row units when you're just utilizing the rear rows on the planter. So the first thing we're gonna do, especially for the push rows, is we're gonna remove this cap and put it directly onto the elbow. And then we're just gonna store these caps <clears throat> in the shop until we're ready again to go back to 30 inch row configuration. Of course, 4000 series, you won't utilize these. Of course, we're always utilizing the rear rows. <clears throat> so the next thing we gotta do is change our disc and components inside the meter. Now, we're gonna go through the example of changing from corn to soybeans, <clears throat> as is the most common configuration. And the first thing we have to do, of course, is remove our vacuum hose from the top. We're gonna to rotate our hopper horizontal, utilizing our kickstand to help hold the meter up. Then going to remove the meter cover, take the cover off. Of course, we need to change our disc. So we're going to take our corn disc off, set that to the side. And of course, we're gonna take our ejector out for our corn disc as well. Okay, so we got our ejector out. The unique part inside the meter cover for push row units, okay, and this is only for push rows, is we have to utilize something to, of course, block off the vacuum for those front rows when they are not being utilized. Inside that meter cover, and again, if you were planting corn, this plug would be located in the vacuum elbow right here. So your hose is always on the meter. We use this plug inside to block off the vacuum. So of course, no vacuum leaks because you're just using the rear rows. When we're going to utilize the front rows to plant soybeans, for example, or Milo or one of those other crops, you of course need to remove that cap, put it into the storage holder right inside the meter cover. So it's super easy. You don't have to store it anywhere. It just lives inside the meter cover. On a 4K unit, so 49 and 4705 model planters, you won't have the cap, of course, because you're utilizing those, but the storage location will still be there. So push row units, take the plug out, put it into the storage location. We then, of course, take our ejector wheel for our crop, in this case, soybeans, put it into the meter. We're going to take our disc, put it onto the meter cover, make sure it's retracted on, and our disc and meter cover is ready to go. <clears throat> if we set this to the side for now and we focus on inside the meter itself. Now this is just for soybeans where we physically remove the ejector out of the meter. All the other crops, cotton, sugar beets, milo, the ejector stays in the meter. So for soybeans, if I tilt it to the side so you can see, of course we have our uh, singulator in the top, it's toolless to remove, so you simply lift, push up and pull out, take the whole assembly out, store it in a location until we're ready to go back to a crop that needs it. And then we also have our meter baffle inside the meter. It's all the way down for corn, all the way up for soybeans. Okay, it's pretty simple to, to remember all the way down for corn, all the way up for soybeans. Other crops, again, referencing your owner's manual would all be in the lowered position or position number one. There's numbers inside referencing the location of that baffle. And for soybeans, we want that all the way up in the highest position, all right? Once we removed our singulator, we moved our baffle all the way to the top. We simply take, again, our meter cover, put it back on to the mini hopper and rotate her down, latch it in, put our vacuum hose on. And really from a mechanical standpoint, that's all we have to do. Nothing on the delivery tube has to be touched, changed, or modified to change crops. Okay, so very simple, very easy from the mechanical standpoint. And really we're ready to go to the field. Let's take a look at what we have to do in the Blue Vantage display to change crops as well. 
As we've completed our mechanical changes on the planter for crop changeover, let's kind of walk through what we have to do on the monitor itself to kind of finish that crop changeover piece. On our demo display here for Blue Vantage, we have it configured as a 49 or 4705 model machine. So if we're going to go into our plant page, of course, we have our corn tasks that are already there. Now we got to make a soybean task. So again, we're going to add one to the list. Of course, our products over here, we're going to tap on that box. And this is where we're going to change our crop selection. So crop, in this case, we changed to soybeans, but of course we have cotton, sugar beets, and milo. So select our disc, soybeans. We select which cell disc we have, again, on 30 inch rows. Most 20 inch row configurations will be our 92 cell double row disc. And for 15 inch configurations, we'd have a 46 cell disc. So 4705, as this is configured to, we're gonna select our 92 cell disc. And then of course it changes your variety. So if you pre-populated soybean varieties in there, it will of course show them on the list. Once we hit the checkbox here, you'll notice that it automatically changes our pressure values here for soybeans. So again, one of the benefits of that Blue Vantage display, we pre configure the correct or recommended vacuum and bulk fill settings based on your crop type and planter size. You of course, population range changes. So this is where you would change your population for your new crop. Other than that, there's no other changes required in the display to change to soybeans on a 47 or 4905. 3665 is gonna be very, very similar. And if we go out of this task setup and I'm gonna go into Again, our training mode set up just like you can do on your Blue Vantage display. And I'm gonna change the planter model to a pivot fold planter. So a lift and pivot machine. We'll let it reconfigure for that lift and pivot configuration. We get back to our ready to plant. We hit plant. You can see again, we have nothing but corn tasks currently in there. We hit add. You can see now we're gonna again, go to the same spot to select soybeans. Soybean disc, in this case, will be using 46 cell. Of course, the only difference here between our population is our front rows button. So to turn on or shut off push row units to again, make them active when we're utilizing them for soybeans, of course, they're up now, simply press down. It will then activate those push rows, true depth, anything that's configured on for those push row units will now become active once you go down. Of course, physically on the planter, you need to unlock them and set them down. It doesn't do it automatically. This is just purely from the electronics standpoint, allowing them to turn on and of course, send information to the Blue Vantage display. So unlocking the rows, lowering them down, those type of things uh, will be done physically on the planter like we always have done. But from an electronic standpoint, this is all you have to do to let those push row units down. One thing I will show you though, on a split row configuration planner equipped with true depth hydraulic downforce. If we go back out here to the home page, we're gonna go into actions. We're gonna go down to the left hand side where it says downforce. Again, this is with true depth hydraulic downforce only. You can see right here that there is a lift assist feature on uh, as a selection. When you turn lift assist on, what that does is take approximately 150 pounds of lift or weight off of the row unit. So we're using the hydraulic downforce cylinders, taking weight off the rows, so it is a lot easier to utilize your lock mechanism to pick up and lower those push units when you're, of course, physically setting them down in the field. So lift assist, a nice feature, whether going down or up, makes it easier on you, the operator, to change crops. Of course, once you're done, you can simply come in and just shut it off. And of course it goes back to normal operation. So lift assist available on true depth equipped split row planners to help you with that crop changeover. Kind of a unique feature. You don't need to use it to lower the lower or raise the row units. Just makes it a whole heck of a lot easier. So again, keeping with Blue Vantage, easy to use kind of walk through the quick crop changeover to allow you to change crops quickly, efficiently, and get back in the field.